Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and this is the fifth part of a five-part final exam review for my intermediate algebra class. In this video, we'll take a look at graph and conic sections. In this equation, we have only one of the variables being squared. That tells us that we have a parabola. Because the variable that's being squared is y, that tells us we have a parabola that opens to the left or to the right. And because we don't see a negative sign in front of the y squared, that tells us that this is a parabola then that opens to the right. We'll start by finding the vertex, which is the point hk. This is of the general form x equals y minus k squared plus h. So h is negative 7 and k is positive 1. Our vertex is negative 7, 1. Next we find the x-intercept by setting y equal to 0. Here x will equal the quantity 0 minus 1 squared minus 7. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 and 1 minus 7 is negative 6 so the x-intercept is at negative 6, 0. The axis of symmetry is the horizontal line that runs through the vertex. Here that's going to be at y equals 1. Now if we think about what this graph looks like, negative 6, 1 would be somewhere around here. And if this opens to the right, we have to cross the y-axis. So this parabola will have y-intercepts, so we'll find those. We find y-intercepts by setting x equal to 0 and solving. So 0 equals y minus 1 squared minus 7. We can solve this by extracting square roots. Let's add the 7 to the other side. We'll take the square root of both sides. Remember that when we take the square root of the constant side, it's going to be plus or minus. So we get plus or minus the square root of 7 equals y minus 1, and we'll add 1 to the other side. 1 plus or minus the square root of 7 equals y. We're going to go ahead and simplify that uh, on our calculator. Okay, the square root of 7 is approximately 2.6, so 1 plus the square root of 7 is approximately 3.6, and 1 minus the square root of 7 is approximately negative 1.6. So we can put our y-intercepts at 0, 3.6, and at 0, negative 1.6. Okay. I'll show you how to graph that on this next screen. Now I'll use GeoGebra to show you the graph of this equation. I'll begin by putting our vertex negative 7, 1 on the graph. And we found that the y, I'm sorry, the x-intercept was negative 6, 0. If we draw the axis of symmetry, this is a parabola opening to the right, so if we draw the axis of symmetry, we notice this x-intercept is one unit below the axis. I can plot another point that's one unit above. The x, I'm sorry, the y-intercepts were at 0, 1 plus the square root of 7, which was approximately 3.7, and also 1 minus the square root of 7, which was approximately negative 1.7 on the y-axis. So there are five important points. Now we just draw a smooth U-shaped curve through this. Let me click on the graph, and that's what it should look like. On to our next equation. This is a circle. We have x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. Here the radius is going to be 5. Our center is at hk. Uh, here that's going to be negative 4 for x and positive 6 for y. We will put a point at negative 4, 6 and we will move 5 up, down, left, and right. When we have those four points, we draw the circle that goes through them. And I'll show you how to do that with some accuracy on the next page. 
Now I'll use GeoGebra to show you the graph of this circle. I've already put the center of the circle on the graph at negative 4, 6. I want to move, uh, the radius was 5, so I want to move 5 to the right, 5 to the left of the center. Also from the center I want to move up 5 and down 5. And now I want to just draw the smooth circle that goes through those four points. Here it is. Here we have an ellipse. HK is the point 1, negative 5. The way that we know this is an ellipse, both variables are squared. It's a sum, and the two denominators are not the same. The denominator of 9 tells me that A is equal to 3 for this ellipse, and B is equal to 4 from the denominator of 16. What we do here is we start at the point 1, negative 5. Since A is 3, we're going to move 3 to the right and 3 to the left from that point. Because B is 4, we're going to move up 4 and down 4. And then we're going to draw an oval through those four points. I'll show you it with more detail on the next screen. Now I'll use GeoGebra to show you how the graph of this ellipse should look. I've already plotted the center at 1, negative 5. 1 to the right, down 5. Our value of A was 3, so I want to move 3 to the right of the center and 3 to the left of the center. Our value of B was 4, so I want to move 4 above the center and 4 below. And now those four points I want to connect with a smooth oval shape like this. And there you have it. Okay, we've run to our last equation. This is a hyperbola. The way that we know that is that we have two variables being squared, and it's the difference of the two, uh, the two terms. That tells us hyperbola because it's x squared minus y squared equals 1. This is a hyperbola that will open to the left and the right. Start by finding the center at hk, which here will be negative 3, positive 3. Negative 3 because x plus 3 is the same as x minus negative 3. x minus h gives us negative 3. Here, y minus k, k is positive 3. The denominator of 4 underneath the x squared term tells me that a is 2, the square root of 4. The den denominator of 25 tells me that b is 5, coming underneath the y squared term. A rough sketch of this graph, we start at negative 3, 3. We go 2 to the right and 2 to the left because a is 2. We move up 5 and down 5 because b is 5. We're going to draw a box that covers those four points. We're going to draw asymptotes through the corners of the box. And because, again, this one opens to the left or right, the branches are going to turn around at these two vertices. Something like this. And I will show you that in more detail on the next screen. Now I'll use GeoGebra to walk you through the steps for graphing this hyperbola. I've already placed the center of the hyperbola on the graph at negative 3, 3. Our value of a was 2, so that tells me to move 2 units to the right and 2 units to the left of that. My value for b was 5, so I'm going to move up 5 units and down 5 units from the center. And I need to draw a box using a dashed line that uh, will form a rectangle based on those four points, like this. I'm going to draw the asymptotes through the corners of this box that will also pass through the center. The slope of the one rising up to the right will be 5 halves, b over a. The one falling to the left will be negative 5 halves. So here we go, uh, up 5 halves to the right and a uh, slope of negative 5 halves to the left. Now that I have my asymptotes in, I can get rid of the box, it's a little distracting there. And I need to draw the 
parabola, the hyperbolas, the branches will open to the left and to the right. They'll pass through the vertices B and C. And here's the graph. All right, if you have any questions or comments on these or similar problems, or if you want a review of the final review and answer key we've been working on, or if you've got a request for a video that you'd like to see, go ahead and visit the contact page at my website. And the address there is georgewoodbury.com. Thanks and good luck.